Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today we will take a look at some new Just No H O A content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now let's dive right into the stories. First one is titled "The Meddling H O A President Ended Up Playing Himself." I'm in my late 20s. The software company I had been at went public, and I cashed out and moved back home to Florida. With nothing to do, I started investing in rental properties with a good friend of mine. This started about a year ago with the president of an HOA where I purchased two condos. This is a man in his late 60s, thinks he is the second coming of Jesus. From the get-go, he made comments about being young and buying houses. Why my parents weren't co-signing, or must be nice to have a trust fund. Both properties had existing tenants. One is still there; the other one left. My business model has been to completely remodel every property between tenants to get the maximum rental income. Construction was a nightmare; literally everything was a problem. Dumpsters smelled. Contractors leaving at 5:05 p.m. Being accused of not pulling permits. You name it, the HOA president tried to meddle his way in. I submitted six rental applications, all got denied. I was never given a reason, but the board was happy to cash my application fees. My company's attorney got involved. It took six months and many wasted days in a courtroom, but we finally got the books. I had a family friend go through them and found some inconsistencies. He found that this idiot and his two cronies had been stealing thousands of dollars from the bank account. He was writing fake invoices to his own company. My magician attorney was able to get text logs of them discussing blocking my apps. Mainly, they wanted me to dump the property so they could buy it. Now to the justice, we won a sizable judgment against him personally. The HOA's E and O insurance went after him. Today, he put his house up for sale. The house he had been living in for 30 years. To throw salt on his wound, I did put in an offer for 65% of what is asking, though. But I doubt I'll get a response. The best part? We offered to settle for a fraction months ago. We even were willing to include a non-disclosure. The idiot told us to pound sand at every turn. Next one is titled "HOA put a lien on my property over an unpaid $25 late fee." Was switching from paying my HOA by check to ACH. Something fudged in the system, and my payment didn't come through until the month after. After this happened, I was assessed a $25 late fee. Keep in mind, this is April of 2020, amid a global pandemic where foreclosures are frozen and everyone's finances are in question. After this late fee assessment was brought to my attention, I decided that I would call the HOA and try to explain what happened. I did not want to give them an additional dollar above my monthly dues. I pushed off calling them. My biggest mistake. After this first fee, I was then assessed a $50 late fee monthly throughout the pandemic. After a few months of this, I finally called the HOA company and spoke to the manager. He needed my help letting a contractor into our building and told me he'd do me a solid in return by removing my balance. Elections for the board were a month later. I was running for treasurer. As I walked in, the manager of the association was handing out ballots. He tells me I can't vote nor can I run for treasurer due to my outstanding balance. He even had the balls to tell me he had never spoken to me in his life. The election was a fiasco that deserves its own post. Cops called, assault charges, all around chaos. Another few months go by and my balance slowly grows. It got up to $500 off of the original $25 late fee. I was getting charged more penalty and interest than a credit card company by my own HOA. I then get a letter in the mail from the county letting me know a lien has been placed on my property. I believe this was in spite of the election results, results that fell in my favor. I called the attorney offering a settlement and got no response from the HOA. So I called the president of the board and got a letter clearing my balance with the association, cleared my lien, and even got the collecting attorney to pay all legal fees. 
the worst part is this whole situation is going to cost us, the homeowner's money, over a petty $25. Next one is titled, HOA Compliance. I hate my HOA. The only reason I live here is because the house was dirt cheap at the end of 2010. For the most part one haven't had a lot of complaints, but during the lockdown, I decided I wanted to give my yard some much needed TLC. It started with putting a gazebo in my backyard. I secured all the permissions I was told I needed and completed the work. Not two weeks after completion I received a letter stating it was out of compliance. After weeks of arguing I had to literally pick up my 3,000 pound redwood gazebo and move it three more feet from the wall. Now I get letters complaining about the vegetation in my front yard. I get it, it's been neglected for a while. I'm doing my best to comply but the trash guy only comes once a week so I can't throw away much yard waste at a time. Cue more angry letters and enter the malicious compliance. I decided the I'm going to remove my tree and replace it. I also want to just remove five plants. One of them is clearly dead by now. Their paperwork specifically says that I have to submit one item per design change request. So I submitted seven different requests. One for each plant. One for tree removal. One for tree installation. Now they're sending me generic copy-paste replies saying I can change the yard. None of them specify what design change was approved. I just keep replying to all of them asking for clarification. The last one I got said, it, was for the tree removal and planting of a new tree, but it didn't include the original letter or even a reference number. So I just replied back that I would like the specific letter included in the email so I can have an approval paper trail. They burned me bad with the gazebo incident. I won't get burned again and I'm having a grand time wasting as much of their time as possible. I smile every time I reply to an email asking for specific information. Edit. Since many of you are saying I should run for the board, here's why I won't. I have a full-time job that requires at least two weeks of travel each month. I have a teenage daughter that I want to spend as much time with as possible before she moves out. We go to a BJJ gym four to five nights a week. I also have a foreign exchange student living with me that wants to see America. My wife is a principal. And I absolutely hate the HOA, so joining that team and dealing with others' hatred for it is most definitely not what I want to do with my free time. I'll play their games, maliciously. And yes, I want to move. But I dunno if you realize this or not, housing prices are insane. I'm staying put for now. Next one is titled, Obnoxious Perimeter Fence. Our HOA has three phases. Ours is the oldest and has the least amount of common property. HOA built a perimeter fence that borders a drainage ditch that backs up to the school in our phase. A couple years ago the HOA raised fees and justified it to include lawn maintenance on the strip behind the fence. Lawn company barely mowed it, had to complain regularly, but it at least got mowed occasionally. Later developer sold all the houses and HOA transferred to community that year. Newly elected resident Baud, conveniently a majority from the other phases, mentioned they would try to find a better lawn company. Next year's annual meeting rolls around, and Baud announces the plats actually extend out to the drainage ditch and it isn't common property so there's no plan to maintain it. It's up to individual owners. Cherry on top as the fees stayed the same. Problem is I either have to carry my equipment to the front entrance of the phase and wrap back around a half mile to trespass what's now private property to get to the strip, go over the HOA built fence with a ladder that I'm now informed is actually my fence, or go the shorter route down an 8-foot drop from a bridge and trespass other private property to get to it. Well everyone sore about it on this road. The informal policy last year seemed to be don't ask don't tell and the drainage ditch was left to grow wild. Obnoxious for weed maintenance as seeds blow into my lawn but so is life. Welp it's midsummer this year, weeds are nice and tall, HOA's been dropping the ball on a lot of our maintenance for this phase on the stuff our fees are supposed to cover while our money goes to maintain in their phases, and I suspect as retaliation for the social media complaining they decided to have the management company send out enforcement letters en masse to everyone on the road. Pushed again.
still politely, but thinking duck these pricks. They said developers may have entered private agreement to build the fence but all their HOA documents they've inherited have no record of an easement for it. There's some language about maintaining the drainage easements in the CCRs, but not sure whether it covers drainage easements on our private property. Generally just duck HOAs. Bad way for cocksuckers with god complexes to try and lord over their neighbors. Next one is titled, HOA tried to tow my legally parked car twice in one day. California. I paid cash for a two-bedroom condo in April. The condo came with two parking permits, one red, one green. The updated rules that were sent to me after closing states that an owner gets two parking permits, one for covered parking, and one for uncovered parking. However, the rules do not state which permit is for which parking. Walking around the neighborhood revealed both green and red permits under covered parking as well as about half of the vehicles showing no permit at all. One week ago I received a notice on my windshield that my car would be towed for not showing the proper permit even though the permit was clearly visible in the corner of the passenger side windshield. In fact, the notice was placed under the passenger wiper blade directly above the permit. I called the management company and informed them of their mistake along with a picture of the permit in the corner of the windshield. I thought that this would solve the problem. I was wrong. I am a nurse and I work the NOC shift. At about 1300 my wife came in screaming that one of our cars was being towed. I immediately got up, got dressed, and went outside to find an employee of the management company directing a tow truck to tow my car. She said that it was being towed because it had the wrong color permit. I immediately pulled up the R&Rs on my phone and asked her to show me where the color codes were explained. She couldn't do that, because that explanation doesn't exist in the rules, but she refused to stop the towing company, so I had no choice but to call the police. Upon arrival I explained to the officers what was happening and showed them the R&Rs on my phone, and both of my cars with the proper permits. They told the management employee and the tow company that they had no reason to tow my car. The representative hemmed and hawed that I was parked wrong even if the rules didn't state so. The cop ordered the tow company to release my car. Problem solved, right? Wrong. I go back to bed and just fall asleep when my wife comes in screaming that they are towing the car again. I go back outside and the same cop is there from earlier. This time the president of the management company, the one who oversees HOA board meetings, is there along with the same tow truck driver and employee from before. This time my car is already up on the flatbed. The manager told police that I still had the wrong permit to use covered parking, even though it was the right one according to this unwritten rule that I had learned of earlier in the day. The cop asked the manager if she had inspected the permit before calling for the car to be towed. She admitted that she hadn't and was just going off of what the employee had told her from earlier. The cop asked her to verify that the permit was the right color to be under covered parking and she hesitatingly admitted that it was. The cop was visibly perturbed and again ordered the tow truck to release my vehicle. He then gave a stern talking to the manager about making false claims and not verifying for herself what her employee told her. The cop gave me a case number and said that both reports would be available in 24 hours. I plan to use those reports to bring this to the attention of the HOA board as I know for certain that the manager will try to sweep this under the rug, or will refuse to even acknowledge this incident. What should my next step be? Update. There was an attempt to bar me from the meeting two days before it was scheduled. For reasons I won't go into now the condo is held in a trust with my son as the beneficiary. Which means from a legal standpoint he is the holder of the deed. The HOA management company tried to argue that only deed holding owners can participate in violation hearings. This, despite me having a fully encompassing power of attorney for my son that explicitly gives me the power to manage all real estate holdings. In the end my son sent an email to the HOA management designating me as his representative in the matter and they were forced to accept it. However, the meeting was postponed until August 3rd. Edit. I was banned from HOA for my previous post. Apparently they don't take too kindly to people exposing HOA's suck-ups. 
Edit number 2. From the first viewing to the close of escrow I have always been the POC. The POA specific to this property has been on file with A. The escrow company B. The BIA, the condo is on leased Indian land C. My financial institution D. The HOA management company, the one causing these problems E. The home insurance company the HOA management company did not even know any of my son's contact info prior to the 24th as they have never had any reason to interact with him due to the POA. This was a ploy to prevent me from representing myself at the hearing, but it backfired on them. Last one is titled, HOA had entire community purchase crappy mailboxes from friends company. I was a minor when this happened and only know the details from my parents complaining. We lived in a approximately 500 home community. At the time, it was pretty close-knit. My street was very close, as in dozens of neighbors attended my sister's wedding. We watched each other's animals and kids, had keys to each other's homes, etc. There was an HOA, obvious or why'd I be posting. When I asked about it when I was young, my dad explained that it was for maintaining the entrance to the community and the landscaping along the main road. Apparently, the fees were a couple hundred a year, which was not very much. The HOA really wasn't that bad and wasn't even something that I gave a second thought about while growing up there. I think that they met a few times a year. My dad later did his own stint on the board as his community service. My parents lived there approximately 30 years, even after us kids were gone. The board started to change around the time that I was in high school. The board decided that we needed matching mailboxes. Supposedly, the post office complained that not all of the mailboxes were the proper height. Each home was given two mailboxes to choose between, both from a company apparently owned by a board member or her friend. These were black, fancy, mailboxes that were hideous. Every home in our community soon had these new, overpriced, each home had to pay for its own, ugly mailboxes. Also, we live in Florida. We get a lot of rain. Every time it rained, the mail somehow got wet. I still have no idea how you could mess up the basic function of a mailbox so thoroughly. No good ending. Just before my parents moved, the HOA bulldozed the natural area of the community park which apparently went against the bylaws and state laws as there were protected gopher tortoises living there, loved to feed them when I was young. No one ever turned them in because the community didn't want to have to pay for their own board's misdeeds. Just sad that a great place to grow up went downhill. Thanks for listening.